brush finisher. My name is Jacinta and this little cutie pie here is Frank, my finisher for Lipping Pie. Today we're going to do something different. I am involved in a Ugly Duck Challenge hosted by the beautiful Corey from Desert DIY. I'll leave a link below so please pop over to her channel and have a look. She does some amazing work. I'll link for the playlist below so you can catch up with all the other artists work. Now this is a challenge. Alright. So what you do, please like and subscribe so Corey will announce the winner one week after we've launched this competition, who the winner is on this particular challenge. Um, today's ugly challenge, now the rules are, oh, I wasn't calling you ugly, Frank. Sorry, buddy. So, the rules of the Ugly Duckling Challenge is competitors need to find the ugliest second-hand piece of finish they can find and make it go from an ugly duckling to a beautiful swan. Today, I was pretty lucky and hubby brought home this ugly duckling. This is a win, my husband will get his bar. Hopefully get back to renovations on our games room. So I'm gonna show you a picture. This is what it currently looks like, it's an absolute mess. For me, even if we don't win, subscribe to us. <laughs> I think we're gonna win in the end. My ugly duckling piece. Let's have a look at what we've installed. All right, Frankie, you gonna get down? I'll pop you on the chair. You want to sit on the chair? You all right? Yeah? Okay. This guy here is my bar. And I will bring this down so you can see. All right. Um, we've got pieces falling off. We have veneer here that is rippled. Stain coming off and he's, oh, I just into I just painted over the old stain. And you can see it. So this will need to be taken right back. We've got veneer peeling off. You can see this is nice and solid, but it's come apart, so that'll need to be fixed. Now on the corners of the feet here, it's coming apart. Bottom of this, the veneer's coming off and it's bubbled as well. And at the top here, we've got lots of chips out of the veneer. So with my ugly duck ring here, we've got shelves that have come off. These are chipboard and like over here, you can see them starting to come apart and swell. So I might need to replace some panels. So it's a mixture of veneer, chipboard and wood. Again, the veneer here is buckling. My husband, funny story, we were lifting this and cockroaches came out. So I'm going to be using my festal sander. You've got a vacuum connecting part and I'm going to be giving this a good vacuum <laughs> before we start. At the back of the earth. Okay, again, the video is starting to bubble. Things are starting to fall out. The drawers are great. I'm sorry, John did fix the drawers up, which is great. Oh, I know. A lot of work to do, isn't there, Frank? All right. Frank's exhausted already. Are we ready to start cleaning, Frank? So the first thing that I'm going to use to clean it is Cuts and Millie's Clean Cut. I pre-mix it in a bottle, spray bottle. I'll we'll use a non-scratch sponge to get everything off. And then you put in, rinse it off with nice cold water. So I'm actually a Casamillis content creator. We do have someone that will sell the products over in America. So if you do want to give it a go, um, go for it. For me, prep is the most important part of the flip. So I give the entire piece a good vacuum, thankfully no more cockroaches. Mm -hmm and I wash everything. And it's an opportunity for me to really get to look at the piece. At first I was gonna use Builder's Blog, hoping I could fix those chipboard pieces, but the more I looked at it, the more I realized it wasn't gonna happen. But anyway, I gave it a good clean and I gave it a little scuff sand, took some handles off with Frank's help. <laughs> Hubby comes home and he takes off the top section of the bar so I can get in and sand it. Be very careful when you're taking things apart if you wanted to put it back together to make sure that you don't just rip it out and um, find those screw holes. So now I use my Festal Sander. I use a 120 grit sandpaper and I sand it all down and then I do the final sand to 220. I've got a soft interface pad that I use and it is just magic getting around all these curves. Have a look at this. So that is really great. I can get in and sand those tricky spots without leaving losing the curved shape. Then I get down on the base and I was pleasantly surprised to find that was timber. I actually had to use 40 grit sandpaper and then I worked my way back to 220. So we've grabbed the Timbermate wood fill 
and I just put timber mate in on the legs. So this piece of chipboard is pretty much typical what I'm seeing. The chipboard is swollen because of moisture damage and it was also outside. The decision has been made to remove it. We're hoping to keep the wine racks. So what we're gonna do, we're going to replace the base, the backs, the sides here of the bar and also the outer sides with timber. All right, so here is demo time. Hubby comes home and, and we go to the local hardware shop to get some new pieces, lengths of wood. Hubby grabs his drills out and starts taking apart the bar. Guys, it is really important that you find where all the screws are and unscrew carefully. Since we're rebuilding it, we're actually going to use these pieces of chipboard as a template when just to measure and cut the wood. Okay, so be really, really, really careful and patient. Uh, it is a little bit tricky. Now, we're also hoping, as I said, to keep those wine racks. Um, so anyway, it takes hubby's ages to do. <laughs> and eventually, as you see, it kind of is like an empty shell. Then we come in very carefully. Again, he takes out the sides because we want to measure that when we cut our new sides. So yes, he's using a hammer, but just very, very gently. We couldn't get the front of the bar detached, which is really strange. So it was really interesting trying to paint. He got on either side of the bar and simply lifted the base off, lifted the top off the base. And then I was able to get in and sand a little bit better on all the wooden parts. Dean places a chipboard panel on top of wood, uses a pencil and traces around the shape. Okay, so that gives us a really good indication now where to cut. And as you can see with the saw, I'm holding one side and he simply cuts it. And we repeat this process for all of the pieces of chipboard that we've removed, as you can see. So here are the sides, same process with the pencil. After everything's cut, I have to sand back this wood. So I use a 120 and then a 220 and I will stain it using cuts and Millie's milk chocolate. Okay, so it's pretty easy. I use a sponge, uh, shake up the mixture, put it in a bowl and just, you know, back and forward in a nice motion and also on the sides, which will seal the wood. It dries pretty quickly in about half an hour. I gave the light sand. I actually only used one coat and the Cancer Millie says an inbuilt top coat, so I didn't need to put anything else on it. One of the panels at the front was, you know, really ripply. When this is us making a new piece. Dean's got his little jigsaw piece out, he's cut the shape and he trims around. So again, I will sand this up and I will paint either side different colors. I spent, I kid you not, a couple of days sanding. <laughs> so because of the stain and we had two lots on, often I had to go down to 40 to grit sandpaper. We managed to say wine racks, look how gross they were with all the old stain on it. And I sand it back and this is the front of the bar. So I've taken all the panels out. Top of the bar, again, sanding, all right, 40 grit. And then I did, a, you know, worked my way up to 120 and 220. This piece here, is at the front decoration of the bar. It's a nice solid piece of wood and I hand foil. Okay, so like your kickboards, I've sanded this right back again and we will hand foil. Look how beautiful the base of my bar has gone. What I do later with those little pits, I just put black paint on. So this is the front panels that you saw. So again, that's the sanding. Okay, um, I use cut some, I use the Authentico primer in the color gray because it is a tannin blocker. All right, so. It's a really nice thick paint. Here I am doing the drawer and I paint the sides as well because I want the sides painted in a little bit. It goes in really smoothly. I do find if you use a water mister, it helps it move. This is the side of my bars, as you can see. All right, more pulling apart. <laughs> With the bar here, these are bar strips. Um, sorry, the picture was a bit weird. So this is how we got them off. They have these little strips, decorating strips, which kind of kept them in place. Now I go back and I paint all those. Some of them we have to replace because they were damaged. Um, and then others I was just able to paint. And then later on you'll see Dean tacking them back on. So this inside of the bar, I choose to paint a white Chelsea cream color just to brighten that area. And with those decorations at the back, it makes it look really classy and, and nice. I did want to paint the top of the bar white but hubby wants that rustic style. Okay, so my first coat of Manning Grey in the Cuts and Millies. This is a mineral paint. It is beautiful. All right, 
so it goes on now I'm just using a sleek brush here I use a bowl you shake it up for about 30 seconds and you pop it on this stuff is incredible I love it all right so you might wait you know a little bit between drying time and then I use my second coat of Manning after it's dried enough now just have a look and it has a self leveling just look how beautiful this second coat yes I did sand with a 320 grit sandpaper in between but look at this guys the self leveling is crazy this is brilliant because you don't need to put a top coat it's got an inbuilt top coat on it if you're a beginner or even someone you know who's been painting for a long time this paint is the easiest to work with I really love it my 12 year old daughter actually started this YouTube channel and if you look down to her further work that she did last year 12 years old she was getting these beautiful line free results as well it is not hard with cuts and millies I love this stuff it's amazing okay so and you can see the difference between the first coat on the right and this one the second coat even though it's a dark gray color um, I guess it's nice having the undercoat underneath it but um, I only did two coats so as you can see I painted the outside of the bar underneath this particular part of the bench okay I'm just going through what I painted <laughs> it's this is a bit of a tricky video to do because you can only see little bits and pieces all over it all right let's put it together now hang on first of all we do the Chelsea Cru same process now this um, spare part that my husband made so he puts glue on the panel here and he puts glue on and pushes the, the panel that I already painted on and we use this little gun here upholstery and he actually cuts the screws off like the heads and then he uses a little hammer to put it on okay that way you can't see the staple marks and I'll just go over and repaint it so you can see the strips here where he's had to make his own all right and because the little nails are so fine Dean actually uses I don't know like really fine tools to hold the nails in place and then he, and then he hits them in and it comes up beautiful look at that what a improvement now Castanelli's has a really beautiful hemp oil Dean wanted a very rustic style bar and so what we do is we use just brush it over the hemp oil okay so you use a lint free cloth and watch the transformation of the wood okay so we just you just simply put it on and rub it on which is really great then I, you let it dry 24 hours the next day I came back and put it more this had been out in the Australian sun for a long time so the oil was just sucked up now the reason I'm using hemp oil is because the bar the wood in the bar is so dried out and we're going to keep it I probably will be reapplying the hemp oil every six months just to put that nourishment back into the bar so it's so it lasts long term that and my husband really likes the rustic look <laughs> but I think it comes out beautiful so we do all the kickboards we do the pole with the hemp oil it comes up beautiful I use the hemp oil for the tops of the bar as well which really shows off all that grain see on the left you can see that hemp oil on the right without um i have my this bar is just all over the show because it obviously is some pieces and yes i do do the base of the bar with the hemp oil as well so this is the top of the bar as i said and behind on that i use the carts and millies top coat on the wine rack simply because i couldn't reapply i put two coats of the carts and millies uh top coat in the satin finish over the wood was enough to protect it okay i simply just pour it into as you see a little paint tray with aluminium foil because it's easy cleanup and i applied this with a roller because it was quick and easy i love the carts and millies top coat but look at the grain of the wood it's just beautiful and I didn't expect the wood to be so nice. All right, this is a fun part. We get to rebuild the bar. So Dean puts a base on and we realize that the sides were too short. So Dean had to cut a little bit of wood later on and he nailed it on and then put it on with glue. So he's, this is where he's cut the wood and he's just pre-drilled the wood because you don't want it to split if, by putting nails straight in. Pop some glue in and there's some little nails okay so that just gave us a little bit of extra length um, we tried to get some cheaper stuff from the hardware shop that was all dean's got a new to toy this thing um does your side sort of pockets okay it's really so you clamp it together and look at that so there's a much easier way to reattach the 
bar together. So he was really impressed with this particular piece of equipment. He's not here and I can't think of what it's called, but I will leave the name of it in the description below. This is Dean's new favorite toy and it allowed him to rebuild it really easy. Okay, so this is a fun part, trying to get everything together. So Dean measures where the wine racks go. Now those pieces of what wooden wine rack, they were screwed in from the base. So Dean's just making sure that they're going to be put in the right place before he screws. And again, the second section of the bar, he's had to add that little bit of wood on just to make sure that he's got enough. So he uses the same process. So if you like the wood isn't the same length, don't stress, it's not too bad. You can fix it. I'm running around the background madly painting sides and sanding and doing first and second and third coat. <laughs> All right, so we're still using those templates and that's because he wants to make sure the shells go in the right position. So he's pre-drilling where the holes were left in that old template. Okay, and that is the middle of the bar that he's building. Okay, so obviously the sides were screwed in from the, bo the bottom to hold them up and then we had to put s screws on the side. Um, the milk chocolate was um, colour from Carts and Millie's, this is the washed away stain, I think was the perfect choice for this particular bar. When you look in it, you can actually see the bar and everything before it was really dark and you couldn't really see what was there. Um, this way it looks really nice and clean and fresh and you can actually see in the bar beautifully. So Dean had to take, you know, just use a little nibbler on the side there to, to pull some things apart. All right, this is the drawers. And this is kind of a scary part because if you didn't put this on properly, the drawers wouldn't work. Thankfully, they worked well. And we had to put the sides of the bars back on. Now, I've, I have um, stained with Carts and Millie's milk stain on one side and I painted with the Manning Grey, Carts and Millie's Manning Grey on the other side. With you, I can be sad. With you, just take my hand. Okay, time for the grand reveal. My goodness, look at this picture. I cannot believe how ugly it was. So I definitely think for this, this bar has transformed from the ugliest, ugliest duckling to a swan. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed my video. Please like and subscribe. It was a bit higgly piggly and my apologies because there was so much to rebuild. But please feel free to look at my previous videos don't forget to check out the other competitors in this ugly dog competition. Happy painting. See you next time. Bye. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and ring that notification bell to get more videos like this one.